let's throw some jabs. The fight starts now! Welcome into a special edition of Jabs with Sergio. We are going to look into the future and see what boxing might be able to offer us in the new year. And I want to start with Canelo Alvarez, who had a 500 year in 2022. He lost to Dimitri Bivol. He beat Gennady Golovkin. What do you want to see from Canelo in 2023? I want to see the Mexican superstar to get back to his winning ways. That's it. Get back against a John Ryder. John Ryder sounds perfect for him to bounce back after that surgery that he had on his hand, on his wrist. So if he can go across the pond, he said he always wanted to fight in England. He can go do that, get that win. Then maybe, maybe face somebody like a David Benavides in September, Mexican Independent Weekend. That's how you come back strong from injury and a loss to Bevo. That's what the Mexican superstar and former pound for pound number one fighter needs to do in 2023. Yeah, I want to see a big year from Canelo as well, because I think for the first time in his career, you start to hear some people wonder if Canelo had lost a step. He loses to Bevel. It wasn't the most impressive win in the world against Gennady Golovkin. A lot of that had to do with Golovkin, who didn't engage as much as he used to, but... Canelo's starting to hear some whispers. They can quiet those whispers with a big year against John Ryder, as you said. But then I say go into the rematch with Dimitri Bivol and do that rematch at 168 pounds. Your weight class. Make Bivol come down to you in the way that you went up to him. I think that could get a lot of momentum Canelo had lost back. And then in 2024, we want to see Canelo against the winner of David Benavidez and Caleb Plant. All right, next year, Sergio, Fingers crossed, we may get Ryan Garcia against Tank Davis. If Tank gets through his fight in early January, these two are scheduled to meet in April. This represents promoters getting together, networks getting together. Do you think this is a sign of things to come? Yes, it is, because we've seen it in the past. I mean, we've seen it with Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson before. That was a mega fight pay-per-view. It, and everyone worked together and it worked out. I think if we do it again, it could it could set a precedent, Mannix, and we can continue doing this. The best fighters are across the street and they always use promoters as promoters and networks as excuses. Not anymore. So if these guys can can mend that, and Ryan Garcia has been calling out for it. You know, Tank Gar Tank doesn't really speak much, but he does always talk in the ring. But Ryan Garcia, he can send out a tweet and it'll be heard around the world. So he wants it. He's willing to 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 do whatever it takes. And I love to see that from young fighters. And, and if the older champions can take a page from that, man, boxing is going to be in a great place in the future. Yeah, I don't see it. This, <laughs> I'd love to sit there and tell you that, that this is a sign of things to come. It foreshadows promoter cooperation, network cooperation, but I don't believe it. I just don't. I think this was a unique set of circumstances that is unlikely to be repeated. Look, I'd love to sit here and tell you that it's a guarantee that Spence against Crawford gets made in 2023. That it's a guarantee that Virgil Ortiz and Boots Ennis gets made in 2023. And I can even see promoters collaborating a little bit more. I think that's possible. I don't see networks collaborating. The fights you mentioned, specifically Tyson, those are mega events. And until those mega events come back, uh, again, we're not going to see any kind of network collaboration, at least not on the level that would make these fights uh, more possible. So, Sergio, you've got a lot of weight classes that are hot right now. Some real talent at several weight classes across boxing. What is the hottest weight class in boxing and what weight class do you think can give us the best fights next year? It's either going to be flyweight or welterweight. I mean, you got these young guys like you mentioned, Boots Ennis and and Virgil Ortiz. I mean, you got so many great fights you can make there at flyweight, at weight, at flyweight with Bam Rodriguez as well. You still got, you know, Cho Chocolatito in there. You still got Estrada. You know, I, I just think the best weight class is going to be where the pound for pound number one and number two best fighters are, or top five at least, in Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. So 147. Yeah, I'm going to go with 140 because I, I look at the fighters that are in that weight class now and that will be in that weight class in the future. And I see some incredible matchups that can be made. You've got Ryan Garcia at 140, Teofimo Lopez at 140, Regis Progre at 140, Josh Taylor at 140, Jose Ramirez at 140. By the middle of the year, Devin Haney is going to be at 140. And these guys are all in the kind of position where you could see 
big fights against each other. These are not guys that are superstar pay-per-view level fighters. So you could see some mixing and matching with these opponents. And I'd love to see it. I think all, a lot of these guys want that smoke. Like they want to be in those big fights. Regis Progre, he's been on the shelf for the better part of the last three years. He wants the big fights. Ryan Garcia, beginning with Tank Davis, he wants to prove himself in these fights. I love the possibilities that exist at 140 pounds. I think this year, you're going to see a lot of heat in that division. Lastly, Sergio, all this gimmick boxing, let's call it, uh, non-traditional boxing, whether it's misfits boxing on the zone, Jake Paul fighting on pay-per-view. Has this type of boxing found a lane um, in around traditional boxing? You know, I think it has. I think it has. I think, uh, you know, they're entertaining to watch uh, because one, they're fighting and some of them actually, you know, they, 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 they're they pretty polished, some of them. But in and out of the ring, it's kind of like a, it's like a comedy show. It's a boxing event. I mean, the commentating was great as well. Todd Grisham did an amazing job with, with the crew that he was dealt with. So it's entertaining. It's not boxing, man. It's, it's entertainment. And I'm all for it, man. So yeah, I think I, I think it has a lane, but it's separated from boxing. It's not the sweet science. It's like, the, it's a sweet science and you got the sour entertainment, but I don't care, man. As long as it, it pulls eyeballs, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I think what's important to note is that a lot of the stuff is taking place on pay-per-view. So these fighters are not necessarily taking a slot away from traditional boxers or costing them money in any way. Quite the opposite, really. I mean, you've got on these pay-per-views, traditional boxers that are getting good exposure. And you think about it, Amanda Serrano, great exposure, fighting on the Jake Paul undercard. Montana Love, great exposure, fighting on the Jake Paul undercard. Who knows who could be next? among those fighters that fight on Jake's undercard. Similarly, with Misfits Boxing, I mean, I probably wouldn't have tuned in to the last Misfits Boxing, but I did have a morbid curiosity in seeing what happened between Asim Rockman Jr. and Greg Hardy. And Greg Hardy got himself a win. I don't think Greg Hardy's a threat at heavyweight, but would I want to see him in again with somebody else? Probably. And I can't say I would have paid any attention to a Greg Hardy fight if not for Misfits Boxing. So... The boxing itself, whatever, take it or leave it. But I do like what it is doing for the traditional boxers that are fighting on, on these shows. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it made me laugh. It made me say, you know, get up out of my seat and be like, whoa, because there were some, you know, knockouts there, like the Hardy one. But it's just entertainment. Don't take it too serious. If you want to watch the real boxing, you know where to tune in. But that's just going to be dessert. It's going to be dessert after you get the main course, which is, the sweet science. So I'm all for it. So here's the question. Here's the question. Will Sergio Mora fight on a Misfits boxing card in 2023? If Todd Grisham commentates the fight and they actually give me somebody that, that's recognizable with a million followers, sign me up, man, and come in.